Welcome to another Inland Seafood training. Please remain quiet throughout the entire training so all employees are able to hear and learn. If you have not yet signed the role, please do so prior to returning to work. Today's training will be about fish and seafood quality. Whole fish quality. Whole fish odors. With good fish, you have a clean and ocean-like smell. With bad whole fish, you tend to have an off, spoiled, and ammoniated scent. Gill color. With good fish, you'll have a red or pink gill. With bad fish, you tend to have a brown, gray, or green color gill. The eyes of whole fish. In good fish, you have clear eyes that are in line with the fish. On bad fish, you'll have cloudy and sunken in eyes. The skin on good quality whole fish should be shiny and vibrant when you press down on it with your finger, it should spring back. And there should also be a clear, thin layer of slime that is used to help the fish swim when it's in water. The skin on bad quality whole fish will be dull. When you press down on it with your finger, it will leave an indention. And the slime that was thin and clear is now thicker and it becomes yellowish brownish color. Scales on good quality fish. The scales should be intact and not many should be missing. On bad quality whole fish, there tend to be a lot of scales missing due to poor handling. Poor handling will cause the scales to loosen and then fall off. Tails. On good quality whole fish, you tend to have a moist and vibrant tail. On bad quality fish, you tend to have a dry and brittle tail. This tends to come from broken cases. When you see styrofoam boxes that are broken and have the tails hanging out, it will dry out the tail and make for a poor quality fish. Our whole fish arrives gutted to extend the shelf life of the fish. Leaving the guts inside of the fish increases the decaying process. Filet quality. The flesh of a good quality filet will be glossy, bright, vibrant, with no gaping, no bruises, and when you press down on the flesh with your finger, it should spring back into place. The flesh of bad quality filet will be dull, mushy, some bruising, some gaping, and when you press down on the flesh with your finger, it tends to leave an indention. Most of this is caused by poor handling. Filet 
Fillets and portions deteriorate faster because they are exposed to more air and bacteria than whole fish. Fillets should not be brown or yellow around the edges and fillets and portions should also not be dried out. Fish handling. Fish should be held with two hands during processing. Never hold fish by the tail because it will cause bruising to the fillets once it is filleted. Pin boning. Step one, rub the fillets in the opposite direction of the bones to expose the pin bones. Step two, Use your fingers as a balancing pivot to avoid ripping the fillets while removing the pin bones. Step three, use pliers to remove the pin bones from head to tail. Step four, rub the fillets towards the grain to be sure that all pin bones have been removed. Your end result should always resemble this. And never resemble this. Deworming fish. Place the fish on the light table to be able to see the worms. They tend to look like tiny shadows in the shape of a circle or dot. Remember to handle the fish with care when taking them out and putting them back in a storage bin. Once the worm is spotted, use the tweezers to remove the worm. There is no need to poke the fish if there is no worms spotted. Proper way to deworm fish. As you can see, she is not using her tweezers to poke the fish and look for worms. The light is used to see the worms. If you have no worms, you put your fillet to the side as a completed product. Now let's look at the improper way to deworm fish. You should not use the tweezers to move the fish about. There is no need to stick the fish if you do not spot a worm. This causes gaping to the finished product. Fish should always be packaged and stored, meat to meat, and skin to skin. This is done to avoid discoloration of the fish. Fillet trims. There are many different ways to fillet fish. Typically, they are called trims. There are trims A through E. Trim A. The backbone is off, as well as the belly bone off. Trim B. 
back bone off, belly bone off, back fin off, collar bone off, belly fat off, belly fins off. Trim C. Back bone off, belly bone off, back fin off, collar bone off, belly fat off, belly fins off, and the pin bones out. Trim D, which is normally what we produce. Back bone off, belly bone off, back fin off, collarbone off, belly fat off, belly fins off, pin bones out, back trimmed, tail piece off, belly membrane off, and the nape off. And lastly, trim E. Trim E is everything that trim D is, but it also has the skin off. Here at Inland Seafood, we keep up with traceability by using our labeling system. All of the labels at Inland Seafood look this way. They have a good bit of information on them. Let's go over the information that you can find on the labels at Inland Seafood. There's the product name, the PO number that the product was purchased on, the unique P lot number. Each product gets its own P lot number, the company's name, an F or a W for formed or wild. The country of origin, the unit of measurement, and the item number. FIFO, first in, first out. First in should always be the first product to go out. Our labels are created in numerical order. P lot number 290111 should always be before P lot number 290222. Labels must always follow the product everywhere. Which should be used first? Number one or number two? According to FIFO, first in, first out, P lot number P2985460 should be first, and then P lot number 2985462 comes second. Because remember, our labels are created in numerical order. When whole fish is cut, the label should follow the fillets as well. This product starts out as a whole fillet with this pilot number. The fillet is processed into portions, placed into a tote, and then that same pilot number should be placed on that tote. There should be no more than 50 pounds of product to each tote because adding anything more than this will cause the quality of the fillets to deteriorate due to the weight of the product in the tote. Shell stock quality. Each bag of shellfish should have a harvest tag when received and when shipped. According to the food code, each container of shell stock must have a certified shellfish tag. And on that tag, the following information must be available. The dealer's name, address, and certification number, the original shipper's certification number, the date of harvest, 
the harvest location, the type and quantity of the shellfish, and in bold letters, there must be a statement that reads, this tag is required to be attached to each container until that container is empty or retagged and thereafter kept on file for 90 days. To check the shellfish quality, you should pinch the shellfish to be sure that it closes after pinching. And you can give the bag of shellfish a good shake while listening for hollowness. The hollowness will indicate that the shellfish are weak or dying. So let's take a look at the entire process. The order is entered by the sales team and then the labels are printed. This order calls for Corvina portions. After the labels are printed, they are dispersed to the proper cutters. Once the proper fish is issued from the cooler, according to FIFO, first in, first out, the fish is now processed. Because this is a skin off portion order, the fillet is then skinned. This is what the product looks like after the skin has been removed. Once the fillet has been portioned to the proper size, it is now sent down the map tray line to be packaged. After it has been completely sealed, it is now associated Notice how the label matches what the order calls for. The product is sent down the line and ready for picking. Once the product is being picked, Both labels are scanned to associate one with the other. A shipping label is generated and printed. And is now applied to the case that the finished product is going inside of. The product is then properly iced and a lid added to the case. The case is added to the proper pallet. The pallet is then taken to the shrink wrapper. The shrink wrapper wraps the product and gets it ready to go on the truck. Now the product is labeled according to the route that it is supposed to be going on. And then placed on the proper truck. Let's perform a fish quiz. Can anyone guess what this is? Hi, my name is Halibut. What about this one? Does 
anyone know what this one is? Hi, my name is Pink Snapper. And what about this one? Hi, my name is Mahi Mahi. And this one? Hi, my name is Seabat. What about this one? Hi, my name is Black Grouper. The end.